Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Writers here, also known as The Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is a compilation, I believe, of around seven procedures that I uh, performed in patients who had attempted to remove earwax themselves, either using cotton swabs or what we call in the UK cotton buds, or some of these other online devices that you're now seeing being advertised, which are very, very dangerous. And this is patient one. They were really, really nervous, this particular patient, and they had really lodged um, the wax deep in the ear. Um, this patient has previously informed me that they actually used cotton buds in the past and it snapped off in their ear and you would have thought um, that would prevent them or stop them from using cotton buds again, but um, they, they used them again and it's really lodged. Now this is their left, you can even see the indentation, the imprint left by the cotton bud. And this patient's um, ear canal it has quite an upwards trajectory. Uh, most people's ear canals, when you look inside there, when adults at least, the, the ear canal tilts upwards. It's about a 30 degrees or 32 degrees, I think that's the, the average inclination. And then near the eardrum, it kind of does dip back down again. So fortunately, you managed to remove that uh, in a more or less a single piece. You can see there's so a little bit on the eardrum. I'm just going to use a fine end suction probe to get that off the eardrum. You can see how the ear canal goes upwards in a way that has potentially protected the patient's eardrum from trauma. So if the ear canal is completely straight, uh, it's more of a likelihood that the cotton bird or cotton swab or whatever devices or instruments people are using now going straight towards the eardrum. So this is their left ear complete. I'm just going to have a final view. So there's a bits and bobs around the end. We're not concerned by this. Patient's very nervous, as I mentioned. And we just want to clear the blockage which we have there. And it's the same patient here. We're just doing their right ear. I think I just put some drops on this side because it looked a bit drier. And I'm just looking for the weak spot. So if I try and peel it from here, so this is probably mid canal. And if I just detach this from the eardrum, sometimes it can just help peel it all the way off the eardrum as well. So again, we're just at the bottom of the ear canal, I'm just trying to hover it over, but it was a bit sticky, so I'm just going to go to the core now, see if I can loosen and break this up. And I'm just going to be careful with the sucker because I don't, we don't know what's behind this wax. Are we right up against the eardrum or is the bony part of the ear canal sticking out here? So we're just going to be gentle and assess it and you see, I'm just hovering over the surface, just trying to break this up gently. There's a few hairs are there as well. When you've got hairs this deep in the ear, more often than not, either they're impacted by using uh, cotton birds or swabs, as I mentioned, or uh, the patient's been trimming their ear hairs and these ear hairs have been flying into the ear. So um, if you're someone that trims their ear hair, that's fine. Just place a bit of cotton ball, a little ball, just at the entrance. You don't have to push it in your ear. Uh, and it just prevents any loose hairs flying into your ear. Because once you've got hairs in your ear, it's very difficult for the wax to naturally migrate and it gets matted. So I'm just trying to tease this. This is a bit more blocked than their left ear. I'm just lifting it up out of that inferior recess. You can see at the bottom, I just that was lodged in the inferior recess. So near the eardrum was a little trench, a little basin, a little dip, and the wax just got trapped in there. So I was having to lift it up and out. Again, a bit somewhere around the edge, I'm not too concerned by that. The eardrum's nice and healthy. This is patient two. Similarly, they had used a cotton bud. And again, you can see in the middle, uh, the indentation left by the cotton bud, it's really impacted. This is their left ear, just took a quick examination. So patient has got a bit of exostosis there, a bit of surface there in the left side, so the ear canal. Um, there's a few bony bumps. It's always important when you're performing earwax removal, even if the patient just attends with earwax in one ear, always examine the other ear prior to performing the procedure because it may give you some tips and clues about the ear anatomy on the other side. Now, of course, each of our ears can have a unique shape and size, but it just gives you um, some um, understanding of what the other ear that's been blocked, the ear canal anatomy is like, so if there's anything to watch out for, just like that exostosis, those bony spurs, we need to be wary of that, just in case the patient has it in this side as well. So it, it, it may be the case that they don't have it in this ear, but it just um, alerts me to the fact 
that it the he may. So instead of being extremely gentle, just trying to loosen this, trying to detach it. And sometimes when you get a dry plug of wax like this, it's very hard to get a suction grip because it's just too dry and it's matted again. As I mentioned, uh, uh, quite often when earwax has been pushed in the ear, uh, there's also a lot of hairs there. So I've just put some olive oil just to help get a suction grip. So I'm just suctioning the excess. And the oil sometimes just softens the surface enough just so the sucker can grip. And there we are. We can slowly but surely remove this one here. So it's quite a large plug there. Just going to re-enter the ear. So there, there is a few bony spurs, but it's not as pronounced as they're left in. Now they have got an attic retraction there, so they've got eustachian tube dysfunction. The eustachian tube is a the pressure equaliser in the ear. It's a tube that connects the middle ear cavity to the space behind the ear, and to the back of the nose. And it opens and closes automatically when we swallow a yawn or chew, and it just equalises the air pressure. So the air pressure behind the eardrum is equal to that in the atmosphere. When the eustachian tube is blocked, uh, typically at the back of the nose and nasopharynx, uh, it can't equalise the air pressure and the eardrum gets sucked in because there's a vacuum effect and then eventually fluid that normally drains out of the eustachian tube behind the eardrum collects and we can develop glue here. This is patient three. Again, I think they used one of those corkscrew devices that I've been seeing a lot of and they did well actually to get into the ear. You can see it's quite a bendy ear. I have to, to the right and back to the left. So we can see three quarters of the eardrum but Northwest, there's still a, a plug that's stuck, and this is in the anterior recess. This is probably the most difficult part of the ear to gain access, and it's right on the drum. You're going to be really gentle, just using a fine end sucker, and manage to get that away. So the patient's symptoms are already alleviated, uh, but I'm just going to go back in. There's a bit of uh, wax at the roof. We're just going to try mop this up as much as we can now. So I'm just angling the endoscope upwards. Um, to visualise the roof of the ear canal. It's quite lodged now. It's a fair, quite, uh, quite a lot of wax here, but because it's off the eardrum, the patient didn't actually notice an improvement of their hearing after I moved it, but it's well worthwhile removing this. Well, there is a little bit on the eardrum, but it wasn't a significant amount. You can just see there, it's just in the, the attic region. And, it's kind of crusted this out, so I'm just moving the endoscope further away, looking for the tip of this crusted skin and wax, and then peeling it away from the eardrum. This ear is a lot more narrower than the other ears that you've seen so far. And again, you can see those matted hairs, so it's another sign. It doesn't, sometimes people don't have many hairs in the ear, so you won't see the hairs near the eardrum, but whenever you do, you kind of have an idea that they have used uh, some instrument to push it in. So that's there, in, no harm done. Looks nice and healthy. So this is patient four. This is a young child actually. And you can see again, it's stuck in the anterior recess. The back part of the eardrum is visible. And again, there's hairs here. And the patient was in a lot of pain. I think they were about six years of age. They were very still there, they're very, very good. It's always more tricky to perform procedures in children uh, naturally because. Not always the case, however, but generally speaking, um, they're just going to be a bit more nervous and not as still and cooperative than adults. But the post patient was amazing. You can see they really lodged it now. Obviously, it wasn't the child using a cotton swab on this occasion. It was their parents. And we just... Uh, growing up in my family, um, my mum used to always use cotton buds in my ear, and it was just the norm. It's almost like a cultural thing. Um, so I'm from a Hindu background, and... It's just, yeah, hairpins and bobby pins and cotton buds growing up. It was just the norm for us. Uh, we didn't know any better. And it was only once I became an audiologist that uh, I realised and told my mum off, really. says, oh, you've been poking my ears for all these years, and it's been bad. But fortunately, no harm done in my ears. I, I was not a very waxy person myself. Uh, any wax that I do have does naturally migrate. But um, So there does need to be a lot more education, I think, um, in schools from a young age about our ears. So... Hopefully something I can get involved with. So that's, I think that was patient four. This is patient five. I'm losing track a bit. Another patient, again, impacted this wax. This is a bit softer. They've also been using some hydrogen peroxide drops. Sorry about that. I forgot to edit this bit out. So I'm just examining the right ear. So the right ear, again, I'm just, although it's just there, 
left ear that's blocked. I just had a quick nosy around in their right ear just to see what the anatomy was like. So I'm just going to gently again get a suction grip. I'm just manipulating, massaging this wax almost. That's probably a good way of describing what I'm doing. It's been gentle in this case, just really coaxing this wax out, loosening it, separating it from the canal. I've just put a bit more olive oil because um, they had been using some hydrogen peroxide drops, which I find can turn the wax very glutinous and mushy, making it harder to vacuum. So the oil just changes the consistency. We're just getting the wax out. I'm just suctioning the excess oil there. There's a few hairs at the entrance that we need to try and navigate if possible. And again, there's a few hairs deeper in the ear, so that's another telltale sign. So I've got a good suction grip now. Again, it's just gently just teasing this away. Patience is a virtue. Um, we always want to... Uh, the patients, all the patients I see, they're... We don't give them any anesthesia. So in the UK, an audiologist like myself, we're not able to provide any local anesthesia. Uh, uh, general anesthesia will obviously be done by a surgeon. So all of our patients are awake. And, and one of the symptoms of earwax impaction is earache. So a lot of these patients are already coming with pain in the ear. So we don't want to add to that. So we want to minimise any discomfort. Again, nice healthy ear. A bit of wax around the edge, around the surface, but that's fine. We're not too interested in that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that compilation, guys. Remember, take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.